Now, although this video is strictly about San Francisco, the truth is that there are actually three other major metropolises, Seattle, San Diego, and Los Angeles that are close to hitting the 50% mark. It's not just San Francisco. This is indicative of the disruption curve we're about to see, the S curve position where the US is in. We are right on that, in that moment where major automakers are about to be hit hard, be disrupted by the sales of EVs. If they don't have EVs available now, they are about to lose significant market share. You know what, I've got to admit this, even though there's been a lot of criticism on the San Francisco and some of its um, unusual policies and things of that nature, I loved visiting. It was It's just such a unique place. And now they've just set this record, you've got to give them some credit. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Sam Evans. And San Francisco have just set a record. Not a bad record. This is a good one. In fact, this is a pretty amazing one. Electric and hybrid vehicles made up more than 50% of car sales in March and April this year. And that was information that was just revealed by the SNP Global Mobility. It is the first major US metropolitan area to achieve that level of electrified vehicle penetration. And I could imagine there's going to be a lot of, um, would you call them rednecks? I'm not going to say what they are or that. A lot of people saying, yeah, look, that's all the weirdos in San Francisco. But I think those weirdos may have a, have a pretty good idea of what they're doing. It makes a lot of sense. In the US, electric and hybrid vehicles make up around 16.6% of registrations in March 2023. However, in the San Francisco area, battery electric vehicles had 34.2% market share and hybrid and plug-in hybrid vehicles together, 15.8%. I really like those numbers. It gives you an idea really of how much more popular fully electric vehicles are versus plug-in hybrids or hybrids. Because if you put plug-in hybrids and hybrids together, that's only 14.8%. But fully electric cars, 34.2%. Now, obviously, a very large percentage of those EVs sold with Tesla. Electric vehicles claimed record market share in the area again in April with 53.1% in registrations, according to S&P. Probably a lot to do with this would be the fact that Tesla and Ford prices for their EVs have come down significantly. I'm going to guess that more Tesla than Ford, but I could be wrong. New vehicle buyers in the San Francisco area are younger and wealthier than the average in other major US metropolitan areas. That's a dream combination. People under 45 and those with household incomes of at least 75,000 US dollars buy the most EVs nationally, according to S&P. That's what the media is saying about this news. I don't think that's that relevant. It was last year when you know Tesla's average sales price was over $60,000, but now is it? Really? People can't afford a $40,000 car? Um, well, considering the facts say otherwise, no, this is utter nonsense. Why? Because the average sales price of a car in the US is well over $50,000, right? I think it's about $54,000 US dollars, might be a bit higher than that now. However, the base, the most popular by far Tesla electric car, the Model Y standard range, all-wheel drive standard range, costs $47,000. Of course, if you can get the tax incentive, which most people can, it's coming down to $40,000 US dollars. That's well below the average US price. So the actual incomes has really nothing to do with whether or not people are buying EVs. I think it's more about whether or not they're actually smart. But I could be wrong. Let me know what you think about that. Now, of course, I'm not saying that about people who buy vehicles that are different. Let's say you bought a Tesla, uh, let's, no, let's say you bought an internal combustion engine vehicle, which is a similar size to a Tesla Model Y, it does similar things. Not that it can if it's a gas powered vehicle, but in, <laughs> in as many ways as it possibly can. That to me, that's, I think that's a bit stupid. But if you go and you buy a pickup truck because you need to for work or you buy a van because you need to for work and there's no other options, yeah, I mean, if there's no options, there's no options. So that's a different story. Interestingly, Asian consumers are more likely to buy EVs as they are in China as well. And that's a demographic that matches a larger segment of San Francisco's population than most regions, according to S&P. It's quite interesting to see that. It's interesting that maybe there's some influence here from the China perspective in terms of the uptake of electric cars in China. And I want to point out something that a lot of people don't realize this, but I was in China, I think back in 2010, 2011, 
And I was riding my bicycle around China because I'd gotten there by bike. I was I rode my bike around the world. I was looking around. I'm thinking, why are these bike? But why are these motorbikes not making any noise? This is amazing. I, it was in a lot of cities. It was quite very quiet because everyone was driving electric, driving electric mopeds back in 2010. Incredible. When you look at the San Francisco buyer in general, it is similar to the EV buyer, said Thomas Libby, a manager with S&P Global Mobility focused on US new and used vehicle industries. The wealth in the area plays a big role in EV penetration, claimed S&P. The higher penetration rates for EVs in the area are not in San Francisco city limits, but in wealthy suburbs such as Los Altos, Saratoga, Piedmont, and Orinda. Hopefully I pronounced those correctly, not sure. Almost half of new vehicle buyers in the area in March had household incomes of $200,000 or more, and more than three quarters had household incomes of at least $75,000 US dollars. Pretty big income there. More than half or almost half of new vehicle buyers in the area had incomes household of more than $200,000 US dollars. That's, that's a significant income there. The San Francisco area is not an outlier. The San Diego, Seattle, Sacramento, and Los Angeles metropolitan areas rival the San Francisco area for the top spot in EV market share, which is quite a surprise to hear that San Diego, Seattle, Sacramento, and Los Angeles are buying so many electric cars. Tesla's presence primed the West Coast to lead in EV uptake, said Libby, and she said the region's tendency to quickly embrace trends in technology is part of its history. People in San Francisco, or in a lot of these cities now, clearly San Diego, Los Angeles, Seattle appear to be more likely to embrace new trends. Maybe people there are a bit more flexible, a bit more willing to accept change. And I think a big part of progress, being a human being, is being willing to accept change. We all find it hard, but some of us are better at adapting. We always have to adapt, whether or not we start a new job, a new, a new degree, or do something in life that's challenging. Adaptation is necessary. It's how we became human. It's how the human species came about, through adaptation. And the people that can't change, well, they often get left behind. The rest of the country is likely to follow, though, says S&P Global Mobility, as automakers invest in their businesses to focus on EVs. The 50% milestone in the San Francisco area is a reflection not only of the growing market share, but also of awareness of EVs and acceptance of the concept. Acceptance of the concept. That's pretty important. Probably what's equally as important, even though people, a lot of people buying EVs have a high disposable income, I still think price matters. As the price of EVs has come down, the sales have gone up. That will continue. I mean, when we get cars like, you know, if there is an electric Equinox for $30,000, I'm not that confident there will be. But if there is, that will drive sales. If there's an affordable Model 2, which there certainly will be, that will drive sales as well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.